I, I work for the International Fund for Animal Welfare. I am the director of the Wildlife Trade Program. Um, the International Fund for Animal Welfare is a global animal welfare and conservation organization. It has uh, regional offices in 15 countries, and we do projects in over 40 countries over the world. My role as the Wildlife Trade Program director is to develop um, strategies and programs globally for IFO to address wildlife trafficking. So we have very specific um, areas that we focus on. We are very threat threat based organization. So the issues that I work on within the context of wildlife trade is the issue of lack of, of capacity for wildlife law enforcement uh, around the world, the issue of increasing demand um, and consumption of endangered wildlife products, especially species of high commercial value. Uh, I work to address inadequate uh, policy and legislation for protecting wild animals, combating illegal wildlife trade, and on sustainable trade. And we also work uh, very specifically to sort of educate people on the plight of endangered species. So, you know, we, I work for the 15 country offices. Um, my role specifically is to develop IFOS capacity building for wildlife law enforcement program, which is pretty much a training program designed for wildlife law enforcement across the world to help build capacity for combating illegal wildlife trade. Um, we do a lot of work in countries like, uh, like Africa. Um, a lot of my work is focused on saving and protecting particular species in trade, elephants, um, tigers, rhinos. Um, these are species of high commercial value. These are species that are being exploited globally for their products. And, um, and, uh, and these are species that are facing extinction because of illegal wildlife trade in different areas where they are found. So my role is to get up every day and try to focus on saving the species from extinction and, uh, and, and just following, as I said, those four areas, which is trying to reduce demand and consumption, uh, which is largely focused on efforts in South Asia uh, and Southeast Asia, in particular China uh, and Japan and Thailand and Vietnam and so on, and, um, and trying to protect wild animals where they live, which is the source countries in Africa and in India and Bhutan and some of the other Southeast Asian countries. I think we. I, I think you know. There, you know. I see some good uh, parallels and in, in experiences for Dominica. I think one of the big things is for me is, is that we need a proactive approach to to, to wildlife management. I, I, as I, I mean, as I said you know, early on in my sort of my presentations, that you know the you know the forestry and wildlife and parks division has been the government agency over the years that have been given this tremendous responsibility for protecting Dominica's nature and natural resources to the point where we are now reaping the benefits from it. Um, through our ecotourism program, but we also have to aware, be aware that the world is opening up. Globalization is, is on our doorstep. Um, there is a, an attempt um, to stimulate trade. We see a lot of discussions around free trade, and what that's going to do, it's going to open up our economy. It's going to open up our environment, and more and more, we're going to see more pressures on our na pressures being placed and on our natural resource base, and we have to develop policies in line in line that allows us to be proactive and respond to those key pressures and those key threats um, and you know so for me the parallel as I see is that you know what's happening in those countries is coming to Dominica the issue of um, you know um, consumption of, of, of endangered species products the issue of demand for species products of species of high commercial value it's no longer an issue of you know because what we have here is always going to be here you know and, and a lot of these countries that are fighting whether it's elephant poaching whether it's tigers um, I will tell you in the issue of tigers um, we, are, we are probably witnessing in the next 10 to 15 years the extinction of a species on the planet um, there's only 3200 left from all account and we're looking at probably the next 10 years so I think there are lessons to be learned from the international scene we have uh, two endemic parrots there we are very fortunate as a small island to have two endemic parrots. Most of the other small islands have one. And Dominica is very unique in that regard. And, and, and the policies that we have had in place um, through, as I said, the tireless efforts of, of folks in the Forestry and Wildlife Department and other agencies has actually kept us a little bit intact. But, uh, uh, but my fear is that with all what's opening up on the global stage, that Dominica is going to soon open up. And we've seen it already. We've seen it with different uh, uh, nationalities, different cultures. We see, um, you know, the influence of the Chinese culture coming in. We see the influence of other cultures coming in. And what that does, it opens up opportunities. And in some cases, it puts pressure on the resource. And we have to be prepared to act. We have to be prepared to act. We have to be proactive. And we have to have a strategy that, 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 uh, that is aware that that's coming on the pike and we need to be ready to respond.